What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Wildcat Cave. Before we get into this video guys, I know I keep saying it, but please keep subscribing. It really means a lot. Uh, since I put the last video out about five days ago, we have doubled the channel size. We are coming up on 100 subscribers. Uh, that is amazing. That is growth like I would have never expected in such a short amount of time. So I really appreciate that. Please uh, click the subscribe button and as always like, comment, and share as well. Um, but today with being four days away from the very first game of the season for the Kentucky Wildcats, we are going to break down the University of Louisiana Monroe and the Cats, uh, kind of give you a rundown of what both teams are looking like and what we can expect from each. I'm going to try to keep this video short. It should be a pretty cut and dry game. So go ahead and getting into it, we'll start with the ULM Warhawks. Um, First things first, they got a new head coach, Terry Bowden, this season, the son of the late Bobby Bowden, who just recently passed, obviously a coaching legend, and his son has had a pretty successful coaching career in his own right. Uh, this is his first season with ULM after they fired their coach last year after going 0-10. Um, there's not a lot we know about what Coach Bowden has done this season. He's been pretty secretive, held his cards pretty close to his chest. It was reported that he has added up to 50 new players, but I don't believe even as of today, four days before the game, they have released a too deep depth chart so far. So he is keeping everything real, you know, in-house, very close to his chest, very secretive. I expect their program to take a jump uh, within the next couple years under Coach Bowden. He is a good coach. I don't expect uh, maybe 0-10, but they're right now they're over-under on total wins is 1.5, so that's a pretty low uh, bar set. Last season, they averaged 16.3 points per game. That was 122nd nationally. They did allow 42 points per game and uh, only gained an average of 306 total yards while allowing 464. So that can be a big key point for the Wildcats' new offense. Uh, obviously not a great team, so it's going to be important for them to be able to get off on a good foot and start the season, uh, have success throwing and running the ball, and get those live reps in as much as possible against a bad team. Also, they lost by an average of 25.7 points a game. Their defensive coordinator is Zach Alley. Um, he's kind of bounced around a little bit coaching. I believe hit, most recently he was at Clemson. He is a 27-year-old defensive coordinator, the youngest in the nation. Uh, this is his first defensive coordinating position, so we don't really know a lot about his schemes. I know Coach Stoops uh, this past week said that they have been looking at, you know, Clemson's film and some of the other places he's been at as an assistant, uh, trying to figure out a game plan as to what kind of defense they might run. Again, everything around this team is very secretive. They haven't let a whole lot of information get out about them, but still probably not a very great team. A team Kentucky should handle pretty easily. Um, they are expected to run the read option as Rich Rodriguez, who has also been a pretty successful head coach at West Virginia, Michigan, and Arizona. He is their offensive coordinator this year. Terry Bowden bought, brought him in. Uh, he's pretty widely regarded as a high-level play caller. Uh, he does like the read option uh, with you know the quarterback and then the, uh, the lateral back uh, following him, uh, where he reads the defensive end and sees which direction he goes. Um, Rich Rodriguez's son is actually, they have released that Rhett Rodriguez, his son, is their starting quarterback. That's really all we know. They don't necessarily have any discernible playmakers on the field at any given time, like the Lynn Bowdens or the Wondell Robinsons or those type of dudes that we know of. None of those guys have stood out in the past or are expected to, really. And he runs a very up-tempo, fast-paced offense. When you run that type of offense, you kind of live and die by the sword. Um, if it's successful and you're fast, you can score a lot, a lot of points. But when it's not good, it turns over to three and outs and gives uh, potentially Kentucky a lot more possessions than they probably should have. That has, And that obviously gives Kentucky the potential to score a lot more points than even they should against a team like this. You'll see down here in the bottom left-hand corner, I did put KSR's Freddie Maggard. Uh, if you go on KentuckySportsRadio.com, you'll find an article that I pulled a lot of this information from I didn't want to you know take some information and claim it as my own when I I did do research and I got you know a lot of this, uh, this information from uh, Freddie Maggard's article on Kentucky Sports Radio. So moving on to the Cats. First things first, we only scored 30 points in four games last season. That's a number we're going to have to see go up. If Nick Saban and other you know classically defensive minded coaches have came out and openly said that the game has changed and defense will not cut it anymore uh, and 
scoring four points or 30 points in four games ain't going to cut it in the SEC anymore, especially when those teams are Ole Miss, Vandy, South Carolina, and Tennessee. And those four teams collectively combined for an overall record last year of 10 and 29. So they are, you know, on average a 3-10 and 10 team last season in the SEC. And if those are the only teams we're scoring 30 on, we're not going to win. We need to be able to score on the Missouris, on the Floridas. Uh, maybe not Georgia just yet, but, you know, working that direction. We have to be able to score those points uh, more effectively and more efficiently in bigger games and in bigger, uh, you know, scenarios. And this is going to be the start this week when we play ULM. Uh, if they can't score 30 points in ULM, they really need to reevaluate what they're doing. Also, last year, finished 122nd in total yards a game at 121. Obviously, we had no real effective passing game last year. That is pretty much exclusively running the ball, which is not a bad number if you're only talking rushing yards. But when you're talking, you know, everything together, that that's an awful number. Uh, 122 puts you very, very, very close to the bottom there. And our passing yards were only five and a half yards per attempt when we did attempt. That number's got to be closer to 10. Uh, I, I do think you're going to see all of that go up this year, obviously, under the new coordinator, Liam Cohen. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about this because if you have any questions about Kentucky's changes or anything, I have multiple, multiple videos covering that a lot more in depth. But I will. we should be looking somewhere near that 200-yard passing average per game. And if you can do that along with the running game that we do have, should be pretty successful. And another really big important factor when you have all this change and turnover is you can have up to nine seniors on the offensive side of the ball on any given drive. Uh, it is expected with their two deep depth chart coming out this week that Kentucky will start even 10 seniors on the defensive side of the ball, and you could have up to nine potentially on the offensive side. That is a lot of experience, a lot of returning talent guys that have been in the program, and not only that, you're you're not relying on freshmen or even sophomores to turn around and pick up a new system. Uh, these are experienced guys that have the fundamentals down and don't necessarily have to start from day one. And finally for Kentucky, it, the big question is really how much are they going to show with the big Missouri game week two? How much do they want to show Missouri? This is going to be a pretty easy game for Kentucky, I believe. So is it a case where you want your new quarterback and your new offense to get a lot, a lot of live reps going into such a big game? Or do you want to, you know, pull your cards back a little bit and run a pretty basic playbook? Um, you don't want to give Missouri too much film on you. You want to be able to kind of surprise them as well. But at the same time, you want your offense and defense, for that matter, to get as many live reps in as possible for the big Week 2 game. So that is really the big question on uh, how how many points are we going to score and how much we're going to see of everybody on the field. Um, finally here, let's go over some of the, the statistics from Vegas. I got these off of uh, FanDuel Sportsbook, as you see there. Um, the spread for this game is ULM a 30 point five point dog i got these um these numbers yesterday they might change before the game probably will change before the game but as of this moment this uh, this is the odds for the game uh, kentucky being the 30 and a half point favorite and that is the betting favorite by a couple dollars um you're not going to win a lot of money on this bet here if if it's me i'm taking kentucky to cover the spread uh nine out of the last 10 day games at kroger field have went over the total points, or or no, yeah, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. Um, UK has actually cover failed to cover the spread in the last six day games in September against non-ranked opponents. So actually, history tells us Kentucky will not cover this 30.5 point spread. I'm gonna bet against that. If, which is actually the betting favorite, but against that specific statistic. I'm going to say Kentucky covers the spread, wins pretty handily here. Um, again, not something you're going to make money off of with both of them being a minus 107, but I am going to take Kentucky to cover the spread. The money line on this is almost impossible to make money unless ULM pulls the upset of the century. Kentucky being the minus 8,000 favorite, so you'd have to bet $8,000 in order to win $100 and vice versa on the ULM. If you bet $100 on ULM, you will win $1,800 for every 100 you bet. Um, uh, like I said, unless there's some crazy upset, uh, this is not one to make money on if you're trying to bet or in a legal state to bet. And then finally, the over-under is 55 and a half points with the under being the favorite. Um, so that is if you add both teams score together, will it be above or below 55 and a half? Um, 
This one, again, with the minus 104 money line on these and the plus 104, not, you're not, this isn't a game you're going to make a ton of money on if you're, unless you're willing to bet big, big amounts. Uh, I said this before, and this is what I was referring to, with nine out of the last 10 day games at Kroger Field have gone over the total points, which is actually the betting underdog here. So if you're going to bet any of these three for this game, uh, the over is the bet with nine out of the last 10 day games at Kroger Field going hitting the over and it being the betting underdog. So that's if uh, you're a betting person, that is the one you definitely want to take here. And finally, guys, my official prediction for the ULM Warhawks at Kentucky. Uh, I'm going to take the Cats, obviously, in a big win to cover the spread at 45 to 10. Um, that is That does cover the spread. That seems about right with uh, both teams probably going to run somewhat of an up pace. Tempo offense, uh, Kentucky's going to have the potential to score quite a bit. I don't believe they're going to shut ULM out. I'm going to give them, you know, late in the fourth quarter or something, maybe some points, a field goal and a touchdown. But overall, that is going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, again, I really appreci appreciate all the words of support and the subscriptions we've gotten. We've doubled the channel in five days. That is awesome. Please keep it growing here. I hope you guys like it. Uh, leave some comments down in the comment section. Subscribe, like, and share. And as always, guys, go Cats.